Welcome everybody to this tutorial where we're going to chat a bit about a request that we received about putting clips together. Grab a jug of coffee and let's get going. Cool. So on the Automator Plus channel, we are keen to help all of you to solve your problems. Um, and one way to do that for us is to log a issue on GitHub. Um, you can also drop any questions that you have in the YouTube comments. Uh, but on GitHub, it's easier for us to sort of paste some code and chat about things, but also give back to the community. So it's not just us on the YouTube thread that actually sees the uh, the code and the resolution, but other people can as well benefit from any discoveries that we make. So one of these requests that we received um, was trying to put a clip next to another. Um, so what this guy uh, wanted to do, this is uh, Shaquille Max, what's up? Um, thanks for, for reaching out. And basically what he had was this issue trying to say, hey, I wanna put the this clip, this is endpoint onto the next clip's start point. Um, and this is the code that he had and was trying to get going. Um, and our initial thought was, okay, well, you can't set start equal to end ticks. So originally we want to say, no, let's uh, try and make ticks ticks. Uh, but digging a bit deeper, uh, we actually found that the end time and the start time is read only. Well, the documentation of Premiere Pro, which can sometimes be a bit off, actually just says that the start time is read only um, and that you should actually be able to set the end time. Although we tried a few things um, and that didn't really work. So what we came up with is instead of actually moving the clip that is currently on the timeline against to the previous one, uh, what we'll do is just insert a new clip next to the old one. So this tutorial is all about doing that. Um, so this was the code that we sort of advised Shaquille to, to use. And let's dig into what is happening here. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is just have a few dummy variables at the top here, um, just to orientate ourselves. And that's gonna basically be the video track number and the audio track number um, that the clip that we are wanting to move up against uh, wants to do. Um, so this is quite a limited example. The one downside of this approach is that you've got to remove the original audio and video file, right? Because we're not just slapping that clip against the previous one, uh, we're actually inserting a new clip. So you're gonna have more clips than you, you originally had. Okay, uh, then same song and dance with the project and the sequence. We're always gonna do this, get a hold of those guys. Uh, then the video track and the track, that's basically just giving us zooming in a bit now. Now we're saying, no, we're in the sequence. Let's go to the video track attribute. Um, and then on that track, which track are we wanting to use? We want to use this video track. And then diving deeper into the video track, we've got our clips. And here's actually where we get a hold of this clip and the next clip. So I'm gonna jump into Premiere Pro here and drop this into a new timeline. Cool. Uh, so our 78 is our clip one and 77 is our clip two. Oh, pff, let's make that a bit better. Let's make 77 our clip one and 78 our clip two. If I jump into VS Code um, and I do a little breakpoint over here and we just run this guy up till there and dive into our debugger, um, we will see that this clip uh, this clip um, is our 77 and the next clip that we've got over here, here we go, um, is our 78 movie. Okay, so what this little piece of code, all this at the top here has now basically just done for us is we've gotten a grip on the clips. Okay, cool. So as I mentioned, the uh, other aspect of this is we need to get a grip on the audio clip. Um, as well. So here we're actually just going to dive directly into the audio tracks. Um, then we need to know what audio track we want and what clip number we want on there as well. So the next clip is number one. So here we're just getting a hold of our audio clip as well. Okay, then we want to put these clips next together, right? I'm actually in Premiere Pro. Just going to move this guy up a bit. There we go. And ultimately what this code wants to do is bring this guy next to this guy. So what do we need for that? Well, we need to know what is the end time of our first clip, right? So this clip, 
that we are looking at here. So we're just going to save our end time in this clip end variable. Cool. Now to insert clips into the sequence, uh, we're going to use the overwrite clip method. Um, you can also use the insert clip method, up to you. And that needs a project item. So a clip as of itself is a child of a project item. So project items are the raw things that you're seeing in your project panel. Um, and every clip that you've got in your timeline is sort of referencing back to that original project item. So when we want to insert a clip, we need to get a hold of that original project item. So we do that by going to our clip and then it's got this project item attribute. So I'm just gonna store that in this next clip project item variable. Okay, and now we've got everything we need. Uh, so now we can go and say, cool, if we wanna overwrite, so overwrite I've set up here to true, um, just a little knob at the top as well that you can tweak. Uh, so if we wanna overwrite, we're gonna get into this little block of code here. And what do we want to insert? Well, we want to insert, slash overwrite, right? The project item, so here we've got our project item. Where do we want to insert it? It's going to be this clip end and then the video track that we want to insert it on and the audio track. And if we don't want to overwrite, we want to insert this little block of code. So you can see the only difference there is instead of the overwrite clip method, we are using the insert clip method. Cool. And then we just got to clean up after ourselves and we got to say, okay, cool, that next clip that we now popped in there, uh, let's go and remove it. So luckily, if we already have a hold on the clips, the video clip and the audio clip, we can just call the dot remove method. And it's got two parameters um, in Ripple, which does as you think, and in a line to video that we've yet to figure out. Um, so currently, we just set that to true, but we don't quite know what, uh, what that does. Um, if you figure it out, please drop us a, a comment in, in the chat. Okay, let us execute this guy and see what happens. Boom, okay, so if you missed that, um, I'll just open this guy at the top here, put this guy at the bottom, and execute this code, and boom, there you can see that we do actually insert that clip back into the front one. Uh, what is actually happening is all of our steps, so let's just step through all of these things one by one. If we move this guy up and we run, this is gonna stop over here. And if I go into our overwrite, um, you'll see that that does bring it in. Um, and then as soon as we remove the video and we remove the audio. Just to maybe uh, illustrate the difference between what'll happen if you've got another clip here. This is sort of where that overwrite comes in. So if we've got a clip over here, keeping in mind, uh, now that we've got another clip here, um, the clip that we actually want to move is now not clip number one. We actually now want to go, the next clip that we want to insert is going to be clip number two on the, uh, on the timeline. So being zero, one, two. Cool, so if we give this guy a go, boom, there you can see it does actually overwrite. Whereas if we had said, I'm gonna go in here and undo, 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 um, let's make our overwrite false, uh, then we will be actually inserting and the result would be something like that. Thanks for watching our video. If you like what we're putting down on this channel, uh, hit like, hit subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications when we upload any new videos. Um, and if you wanna support the channel, please head over to Envato and purchase any one of our extensions.